Welcome to the Grappling We Re- See exactly. Grappling Rewind Podcast. Welcome to this week on the Grappling Rewind Podcast. On this week's show, we're going to recap who's number one, headlined by Gordon Ryan versus Mateus Deniz. We're going to recap submission to underground 18, headlined by Mason Fowler versus Mini Vagales. Magales, champ versus champ, and we're also going to preview the 2020 IBJJF pans. Uh, delayed, 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 but still happening in 2020. They're going to get it under, in under the wire. Thanks a lot, Florida. Um, as always in the show, I'm your host, Mange, my co-host, Emil, and Zach, for like part of it. We're going to do the show kind in of. reverse. Uh, Zach's going to be on here for the news segment, which is really, there's nothing. And then we're going to do the preview, the recaps, and then we're going to do the previews, and Zach's going to basically be on that section of the show. Just listen to the show. It's all going to make sense. So uh, this week in news... There's not a lot of ton of stuff happening. It's uh, pretty much like the quietest news week in forever. There were a lot of good matches. Um, not a ton of stuff announced. Um, I kind of think in news, we'll talk about it like later, but who does Gordon Ryan fight now? I don't know, man. Like, There's been like three different Reddit threads. I'm like, who does he I mean, fight? So, so Penna was actually drawing on Instagram. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, basically Penna was like, I keep saying i'll fight you and gordon was like no one's gonna pay you forty thousand dollars and I it was think like that's reasonable though like what's saying, reasonable that the okay i will fight anyone in the world but i'm not gonna fight khabib for eight dollars that's my point so it's like if your price is 40 grand maybe that's not a realistic price to fight gordon like you'll fight him but with some other contingencies that like yeah, I don't know, I don't what's know. a BJJ match worth? I don't really, I know, we kind of know off the record a lot, a lot of what guys get paid, but 40 grand is a pretty, st- that's I really feel like most day. people are I feel like making. normally, yeah, but like for the guy that's beat you and subbed you, like basically the only Mar on Gordon's record, it's like, like 37, oh, the thing, yeah. he's 37, 38 wins in a row. I think the last one he dropped was the Vinny match yeah. at yeah. ACBJJ when that was still a well, thing. Also, yeah. Pena is the only match outside of Galval. Galval that people are going to be excited about at yeah. this point. I think any other match, like people are still going to watch because it's Gordon Ryan and you want to see him beat people up. Uh, but it's hard to like really hype up any other match at this point. And so maybe 40,000 becomes a more reasonable price tag because it's the only match that Gordon can have that people are going to care about until maybe ADCC. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what my thoughts, which is like uh, run up the money price. does not seem like an issue here. Like, especially with like, we saw like all the money that was being thrown around when uh, Colby Covington's coach, whatever the fuck, Gordon. Yeah, that's something, MMA something. money, though. That's MMA money. It's like, but not really. Like, th- like if someone's willing to put up like, like six grand. figures yeah. for that, it's like someone can cover Pena. Like, that's a that's, we really want to see this fight. Don't I want to see yeah. it. I want to see it. And it's, honestly, I only almost want to see it more than the Galvao matchup. Oh yeah, c- because there's an actual history yeah. there, yeah. and right now it's literally the only mar on Gordon's fucking record. There's I can't think of anything else. And that mini like, match. No, but whatever. Like that didn't end it. That was a decision. Like that yeah. didn't end it. Was anything. A po- it was a points one, I think. Yeah, With but whatever, it was like round scoring. Yeah, yeah, it didn't mean anything. But it wasn't like a definitive, like, oh, he stomped him. It was like, it's kind like, of like, is the last guy to submit him in competition. Yeah, exactly. Which is interesting. So, yeah, that was kind of a huge discussion this week. We'll throw, we'll, we were going to talk about this after, but there is functionally no news this week. So I thought it kind of yeah. bared discussion now of well, like, also, who does uh, he fight? Did I, I don't know, was it this week? I might, it might have been last week, but Mikey... Oh yeah, Mikey Musumeci making an announcement that he's going to be a full time coach now, or something. It was a, a I, I weird didn't really, announcement. On yeah, I Instagram. didn't really understand what it was. It seemed I, like he had registered for Pans at like heavy or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I posted on Instagram, and someone was like, "Yeah, like three days ago, he said he wasn't doing that." So I was like, "Cool, delete <laughs> everything I posted." That was great. Um, I'm all for him not doing the crazy like. Let's not break yeah, your body down yeah, for no reason when you're don't. young and still like a dope American jujitsu competitor. Like, let's yeah. let you fight in the divisions you should fight in, and like be super predominant and awesome and i don't want to watch muhammad ali like accidentally break you in half and take you out for a year because like you fought muhammad ali like, or even yeah. even like not a catastrophic uh, like i just don't da- want to like see the even, wear on his body exactly exactly yeah, i like, want to see him fight wear, guys at like the weight because yeah. like he can be such an unrelenting force in that division yeah. for like a but decade in the gi it was getting to a point where he was you know it's the the same gordon problem that we were talking about in right. the gi, he Mikey beat was... everyone that had beaten him ever, yeah. and then he was just like cool with beating guys. I think he had what a 16 second or something like 32 second world final victory by Kyle Terra Footlock. Yep, and it was like okay, that's the world finals that you just like crush through the competition. Yeah. I, I get it. 
so yeah, he he signed up for Pans at Heavy, and if you remember last year, he had been uh, doing absolutes. He'd been he'd done yeah. like one absolute or two absolutes. He did two. Euros absolute. He did Euros think, absolute, which was, was the big one because he fought Seif, who was I yeah. think like <laughs> six bills, <laughs> something like that. Big big big, boy. big judoka, and uh, then he fought Muhammad Ali and I think one other guy. But those were the two big yeah. like absolute matches. And then he was like, I'm going to do more absolute. But he since then has left Kyotera. He's yeah. now made his own team, which I can't actually pronounce what the no team name is. Um, and he's taught and he basically announced that yeah, he's not going to do pans, even though he registered it like heavy. Um, but he's going to be like a coach now. Or I didn't I didn't yeah. quite understand I what he was trying to wonder if that heavyweight registration was done just so he could pull out and get the attention for it so that he could announce his BJJ fanatics thing maybe. maybe i mean i could he, just... that was part of the that was part of but the he like instagram it, announcement because he, he has talked sure. about doing that before it so strikes it's like... me as like he hasn't figured out what he wants to be doing right yeah sure. maybe that's know. what it is especially with like leaving the gym and blah 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 so yeah that makes sense yeah but anyway right. so so lots of speculation for news lots of speculation for news there's really <laughs> absolutely there's no news this week so we got to like kind of you know run through some other stuff um there's like eight matches i want to see back to the gordon thing because i just can't let it go because it's all that's <laughs> on my mind after after watching this week well and emil yeah. and i will recap what happened a little later in the show here. Um, after watching him, it's like there's like eight guys he could possibly fight that I would be somewhat interested in. Joe Gabriel Hosha, because that was a super sure. close match that he won via one point on a heel hook attempt. Um, you have Galvao, for obvious reasons. He's Galvao. Uh, mm -hmm. You have Pena, because of the history. Um, then you have the match with Vinny, because potentially, technically, that's the last match that he's dropped. I don't want to see that. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't think it's a fun match, but I think like, it, but there's at least there's a story you can work with. Like he beat Tex Johnson, that was the other L that he had as an as, as a black belt. Um, people were talking about the Kynan match potentially, but he beat him at Pans. But Kynan was winning that match on points until he got submitted yeah. by Rene could choke, and that was I think Nogi Pans a year and a half ago or a year ago. I would ago? watch that again. Yeah, I would watch the show yeah, that again. I think that's the other Kynan's good match. Changed a lot since then too. So. Yeah. It would be interesting. And then the other one is like, I kind of would like to see him fight Nicky Rod. Because I think that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I think, he, I think yeah. he'd probably take Nicky Rod. So I think that's uh, but maybe just, reasonably four, four matches. But it'd be fun to watch. So those are like the potential matches you give the guy, and most of those are rematches, and we've seen how most of those end. Right. Yeah. So that does it for news. Let's move into the recap section. Let's do it. All right, so moving into the recap section, let's kick it off with who's number one. Uh, Gordon Ryan versus Mateus Deniz. Gordon Ryan, the under-99 under, yeah, under kilogram champion for ADCC 2020 and absolute champion, taking on the under-88 kilogram champion uh, for the same year in a super fight. 30-minute super fight, stub, all subs legal, sub only, and holy shit. How good is Gordon Ryan? Gordon Ryan is good uh, about that weight difference, Maine. All right, he was bigger. Yeah, okay, he was bigger. He was a lot bigger. He was a lot bigger. I, I th honestly, I don't think that you... So you think this played a bigger factor? Oh, 100%. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Gordon does a lot of the same things that he did. But there's a moment, and we'll talk about this, like Gordon spent six minutes on Mount attacking like Americanas and arm triangles. Man, like, it was only five and a half minutes. Okay, fine. But I'm saying like there's, that is a degree, there's there's a style and there's an attritiveness that you can accomplish when you can when you can do that to somebody. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to mount somebody. I was honestly super, so how do you want to, how do you want to talk about this? Because this was about I mean, a, a 20 minute match, I mean, give we can, or take. We can, we can do highlights here um, okay. from the match, you know. There's some big moments. Initially, two minutes of the match, the first thing that kind of struck me was like, okay, you know, Denise was playing his game, kind of moving out, and like he was engaging more with Gordon than I thought he was going to engage in. And then at one point, he, Gordon goes to like a shin on shin guard, and Mateus rips out and then spins all the way around to re-square. And while Mateus is standing and, like, spun around, Gordon comes up and, and drives for a double leg. And I yeah. was like, oh. Yeah. Gordon Ryan, like, you can't make little, like, mistakes like that. Nah. And little things where it's like he gets in front of you or, like, like any other – or, sorry, almost any other grappler spinning around all the way to get out of that and to re-square, 
totally fine. Gordon was like, oh, cool, I can see your back. You're going to have an extra second to square and get low enough to block my hips. I can come in on you. Yeah, from and, the knees. And then he, he drives. I mean, somebody on Reddit was talking about, like, yeah, yeah, Gordon might be the, the best, best knee, knee wrestler, wrestler yeah. like, in the sport. And yeah. I, I thought about that as, as, as a joke. And then I went, mm, he did stuff that I actually can't think of another guy that I think you you put it best, which is like it's not necessarily from the knees. It's more like his sense of timing is just impeccable. Yeah, and even if, like if the, you the make mount a mistake, bumps, like the way that. So like, let's keep let's yeah, keep yeah, going. We'll, keep, we'll keep going. If you make a mistake, absolutely, Gordon capitalizes. Gordon um, still moves like a guy that is one seventy. Yeah, like and impressively. He so. more than certainly more than anyone at his weight class. I mean, he's he's a guy who who moves and attacks like Dante Leon, right? Like Dante is like yeah. the kind of guy where it's like he needs to go, and we'll talk about this, you need to go to crucifix, you go to crucifix, you need to wrestle somebody, you can do that. You need to take someone's back, you can do that. You need to bear and bolo, you can do that. He can kind of do it all. He can do it all. At a speed, and, and he then can he just can lock decide. you down. And so, you know, there's a moment here where even from just kind of like an open guard, Gordon gets a snap down, gets Mateus to turtle, and goes for a crucifix. Yeah. Like just... Off the bat, it's like there's literally everything super he's throwing at that. it. I have a whole like sequence of images that I took here of it um, in order to get to that position. Basically, they're up in the wrestle up position, and Gordon has his hand on Mateus, and Mateus reaches towards him, and Gordon basically snaps the opposite arm down to the mat and turns Mateus to a front. It was just yeah. to a front lock. It, it was, was just a crazy sequence, and the timing on it to be able to hit that is just insane. Like, he's he's leaning on top of the head. Mateus goes to reach and kind of palm at either the neck or, like, the outside of Gordon's top of his neck, and Gordon redirects the hand and pulls it down and lifts it, like, almost the post on the mat, but pulls it in and goes front headlock on Mateus. Yeah, it's... And, and then to crucifix uh, I mean, briefly. The, the speed that he does... And then he, he baskets the leg and is able to turn it over into, like, a half guard. Mateus goes at one point for, like, a deep half, and Gordon immediately he starts wrenching at the opposite arm on the side that his leg is on in order to get it turned into a mount. Yep. It was, yeah. it was just... It, and and that mount lasts... That's the mount that lasts for nearly six minutes. Yeah. Um, and it's this is a... This isn't a I'm going to hang out and mount. This is... Gordon was constantly attacking Americanas and arm triangles, which is exhausting on the arm. Like, oh, yeah. Defending that, your arm will and, just get tired but, out. Oh, I thought what was really interesting is, like, a lot of guys, when Gordon mounts them, they kind of just, like, I kind of accept it. Mateus was, like, again, a world champion guy. Like, world champion at the weight class. Bumping, 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 getting up, getting his hips. Like, and Gordon had to maintain. He keeps this really nice, low, open hip spread out mount. And a couple times, Mateus almost techs up all the way, and Gordon's able to keep push him down, control the hips, control the shoulders again. And it was like other grapplers, lesser grapplers, would have been like escaped on in those positions or given turned off or like wouldn't have been able to keep their hips where they need to or keep their shoulders just as balanced as Gordon could be. Like, we don't see guys at under 99 have the balance and have the speed and have like the proprioception and awareness that Gordon has. I mean, yeah, it's something special. we saw him sub Craig Jones uh, from this sequence, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, we've seen him sub a bunch of people from this sequence. Um, there's one moment uh, at, at the end of the like six minutes or so where Gordon, Gordon starts to get the gift wrap of like an Americana gift wrap, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Deniz senses it beautifully times a bridge is able to reverse and starts floating on Gordon's hooks, which is just like not a good idea. Like I know that you like maybe you don't have a choice, but like he and Craig, their ability to elevate from hooks is incredible. Well, what they do is really interesting is they elevate you and they don't let you go back down. Right. Like they don't just lift and like turn, they'll lift you and then they'll like teeter you where it's like you have to adjust your weight to not get swept. Meanwhile, they are getting their entanglements that they mm -hmm. need. And, um, you know, Gordon actually starts to set up your favorite, the violin uh, arm lock sweep. Yeah. Um, and Deniz makes, I mean, he doesn't have a choice. This is the, the, the shitty part of the double threat. Deniz steps back to avoid the sweep and create space, but that gives Gordon the space to entangle for the for the heel hook and so i also know. love the entry to the heel hook like gordon like the go watch i can't i'm not really gonna try to even explain like the entry to it because it's 
it's extremely fast and it's it would be hard to explain just without you seeing it. You better not watching this match is definitely worth your time to watch the entirety of the match. There's little technical things that you will definitely learn from this match. He goes out, Deniz tries to get out. And yep. then Deniz tries to roll the other way and pull out, and Gordon beats him on the roll, rolls over his head and shoulders, and then gets to the heel hook first. Yeah, it doesn't matter, like, what the escape is. When you move your hips away from Gordon and give his legs the range to entangle you, he's going to fucking do it. Yeah. Like, and he does, and... But he comes out, the, I love how he comes out the back on the heel hook. Like, instead of basically rolling traditionally through and ending up back in, like, the 50-50 almost, which he wouldn't end up in the 50-50 with where his legs were, but that, everyone's familiar with that roll to 50-50. Gordon starts it and then spins back the other way to get the heel hook, and then Mateus is kind of, like, standing there, like, and Gordon's he like, knows we, gonna, what, we yeah. gonna tap? We not gonna tap? Yeah, Gordon, is like, yeah, I, I Gordon, gotta, yeah. I mean, Mateus did the single tap, and Gordon paused like was like we doing this yeah or are we, we not doing, doing this, this? Mateus was like yeah, yeah. Mateus was like he wasn't he was being honest about it I think yeah. he just knew he was fucked and like you know didn't do a dramatic tap because Gordon was not wrenching the submission and it was great that he didn't because he you know he could, have, he could have injured Mateus, he could have injured and Mateus. I don't want to see Mateus injured because I want so, to see Mateus so they both like Mateus basically done. acknowledged that it was yeah. a sub so it's uh, crazy though like yeah he's so good yeah, he's like, so good. I mean, yeah, but also, like, you know, yeah, M- Mateus is a – he's a gold medalist at ADCC for his division. Yeah. He didn't stand a chance with that weight difference. I mean, like – and yeah. Gordon's skill set is too good is what I'm saying. It's okay. like you – with Gordon Ryan – you're already like up at, Schitt's if you, Creek. Even at his weight class, you're, you're already, already fighting an uphill battle. If you give him the weight class and you give him 20 pounds or 10 pounds, whatever, yeah. whatever weight. I think, what was the weight difference here? Uh, I don't know what Gordon it was. Gordon looked finally. visibly bigger. Than, and Gordon looked I would like say at least didn't 20 have to pounds. Cut. Like Gordon looked big here. Yeah. Like he looked, he looked stockier than we've seen him look before. He's usually trying to make a weight class. This one, it was just... It seemed like it was just kind of like open weight. You got to be fight whatever because it was a technically a super fight anyway of two divisional champions and the open weight champion taking on the eighty eight kilogram champion. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Like, yeah, he is. I mean, he's he's my. He's big. He's very big. My right now. only thought after this match was like, who does he fight? Oh, we've already been over this. I know, I mean, but like, it, it's just he is so good. I, again, I don't have a lot, whole lot of like other things to say other than like jesus he's fucking good yeah no he he does everything that he needs to and in order to get the sub which is you know you have people that ha- like do everything they need to win then there's a completely different thing where it's like you do everything you need to do to get the sub and that's what Gordon super Ryan rare and then yeah. ability to do it which is just super rare he's a special guy to watch regardless of if you like you know his personal stuff on the mat Dude's a special guy to watch. Anything else on this one? No, nah, let's go to the next right, one. Move next one. Craig Jones defeats Roberto Jimenez via heel hook in about two thirty. Yeah, give or take. Yep. Um, this this was interesting because you know you and I both picked Craig, but one thing that I brought up uh, during the preview was like, what? Okay, like if I'm Jimenez, I pull guard. That's not what happened. Uh, Craig pulls guard first. Jimenez content to pass. I like that he's game to do it. Oh yeah, I love um, that. But I also loved in the previews for stuff, Craig was like, look, Jimenez is really good. I want to fight him when he's young, yeah. so I don't have to fight him when he's old. I want to get right. this win now, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I don't, I've already beat him when I'm older, and I don't have to fight him anymore. Craig's there's, there's the a, man. There's, like a 10-year, there's a 10-year age gap here. Yeah, Craig is the man. And I, I just love like the yeah. reflection of, like, I know he's really good. Yeah. This will be a much harder fight later in my career. I'm going to beat him now. Craig is a, he's, he's a funny guy. He's, he's very humble. Like, I feel like yeah. he's never... He never trash talks. Like, Dude still has the craziest sub face every time. Though, whenever Craig grabs, like Gordon will grab your leg and like he'll turn it in. Craig, whenever he grabs your leg, he looks like like he needs it to live. Yeah. Because when he, when where does it finish the sequence here? It's beautiful. Craig is like cranking on it. He's making this like I'm gonna take this home. I need this for my family. Leg lock. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is great. Um, there was a big size difference here too. They said, uh, there was for sure a 20 pound, uh, size advantage for Craig here. Um, Craig relentlessly attacking leg entanglements. Uh, he pulls guard. Roberto is passing. Roberto survives, um, two of the leg entanglements. Um, one by actually initiating a a roll through and, you know, threatening Craig's back, not 
exactly getting there. But... I was I was really impressed. Then like initially, like thirty seconds off the bat, like this happened. I went, ooh, really interesting because if Roberto can see the back, and I watched it back, and I was like, okay, he's not as close to the back as I thought he was. These but... leg lockers, they they live and die by that. Like they know that that's um, yeah, some, a possibility. Uh, like, but Krell- I was Krellinson talks about this. Like Krellinson's yeah. like the way I go for heel hooks leaves me really open to his back attack, but he's ready for it. So. Um, right. What did he talk about that? That was I remember that. Remember that interview or that discussion? Was I that a Shugio? It, it was around Maybe. Shugio. Yeah, but I don't know if it was. Might have been. A, it was. I thought it was an interview, but it might have been a Shugio interview he did. But it was really interesting to hear him like talk about. Yeah, it's open. He goes, but I've drilled this position where my back is exposed in this way so many times With that the I know. Best I, I know exactly what I need to do yeah. here. So yeah. Um, and so the second time Roberto survives the leg entanglement, um, he he back steps and starts to float on the hooks, which again is like, you know, yeah, that it's kind of out of the frying pan into the fryer. Um, and, uh, you know, now Craig is able to elevate and destabilize once he has these hooks. Eventually he, he does gets- it kind of like from the half guard, which I thought was really interesting. Like he takes almost like, it's. I mean, it's a big. He does butterfly, ha- like you know. Yeah, that's but his, like that's his jam. In, dude. in this, he like he has his leg super high up in the armpit as yeah. he kicks Jimenez over to roll underneath him and enter like into almost like a knee bar. Yeah, is how I would see like an inverted knee bar get hit. I mean, but that's that's exactly what he does. I think the difference yeah. here is that he's putting his shin into Roberto's armpit. I think that's he's doing that. My guess is because he knows he can easily destabilize Roberto yeah. with that because there's a size difference. And he can make the space there to get underneath. And Roberto can't close the space and start attacking. He has to come back in. If it's a heavier person, he probably keeps the butterfly hook in and just does the inversion to the far leg. Yeah, I so, think that's probably. I think, I think that's, probably did it. It's the same attack. It's just kind of like. But it was a really interesting way to do it. it. Like how yeah. I'm not. I've I've seen a lot of Craig Jones entries and I forgot. I've never. I don't. I don't recall him. He probably has in the past. Him going so high with his leg in the armpit. But again, it makes sense. He's bigger. And he if he can get over and start pushing Jimenez over to get underneath his leg, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So he gets in the saddle. He then this knocks is- him over. He switches to the outside heel hook. He traps both legs. And then it, it just starts cranking. And yep. he makes that face that I love watching him make. That's it. And uh, Jimenez taps and... Um, yeah, crazy, crazy good. Like Craig, I think Craig is the best leg locker in jujitsu. Yep. So it's cool to see him. You know, again, two and a half minutes. Yeah. I thought this would go a little longer. I thought that, you know, Jimenez would kind of stay that. I, 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 I thought Jimenez was, would be. I don't know why I thought this. Obviously, incorrectly, Jimenez would be a little more cautious initially with Craig and like kind of feel him out that's a little more. That's kind of what I like about it. Like it's clear he was. But again, that's he's what, game that's for what it. I like. He was like, you know what? Like maybe not the optimal strategy, but he. You can tell he's absorbing shit. Yeah. He's like, he's well, like. That's why I like covering Jimenez. Is yeah. because like he's not a guy that you're like, cool. He's gonna stall for four and a half minutes, and when he's ready to go, he's like, no, nah, Jimenez, like, cool. Ten seconds in, let's go a game. Yeah, and I I appreciate that about. Yeah, he gets caught, but it's not even a game. I mean, like his. his well, he, sorry, he'll play your a game. He's oh like, yeah, cool, he'll we're play gonna, your we're gonna a- run yeah. immediately. I'm not gonna yeah. like feel you out for four minutes in a 15 minute match. No, we're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna I be have doing a feeling immediately. we're gonna we're gonna watch rapid evolution from him and as from. That's just why I'm being, so excited to see him at Pans this weekend. Yeah, me too. In the gi too, because he's a better gi player. But so yeah, it's awesome. Craig's a fucking beast. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. So and Craig gets it done. Um, Love seeing Craig Jones do Craig Jones things. Uh, next match, we have Gabby Garcia defeating Elizabeth Clay via decision. There was a little bit of controversy on this match online. People that thought that Clay should have won the decision. Um, I didn't see that. Uh, I think Clay has an entry into the leg at one point. But Garcia is just 15 or 14-ish minutes of pretty sustained, controlling, top pressure, yeah, Gabby, you know, she's doing the the smashing control thing. I'm I'm really impressed with Elizabeth's guard work during yeah. the course of 15 minutes oh, no, I was, weathering I, this. Don't be wrong. I was, imp- I was oh, no, very no, no, impressed no. with Clay. I and just didn't I got see what she did yeah, yeah. to get the well, decision there. The, the omoplata at the end was probably... That's that's the only submission for right. anything no, that I, we saw. I, yeah. and I. But regardless, I got the impression that it's... If we see them consistently match up again, I do see Elizabeth starting to take matches. 
Like it wouldn't surprise me. It at wouldn't all. surprise I me. I feel like yeah. Elizabeth again. She's so good at what she does. Like that underhook. What I thought it was very interesting the way that Gabby addressed that. Like what Elizabeth Clay is so good at is going for that close side leg underhook, inverting it over to the other side, going up into the single leg X or just into the outside to the heel hook position. And Garcia, you see Clay, and she starts to lock the hands, and Garcia goes uh uh, opens the hips and like breaks the grip of Clay by just opening her base wide and with that front cross face, just turning Clay's face away she can't get the leverage under because clay will fold herself over to get underneath you so i thought so, it was really interesting to see garcia like just deny that entry because clay has been we've not seen anyone be able to deny that entry on clay yeah and so one thing that struck me was like watching this was like just the amount of space that um elizabeth clay was able to generate and you know uh she would alternate between going for rubber guard and I think she had the room where, like, if she started to look for the body locks like Jimenez does, mm -hmm. I think she, she could have success here. She, you know? she opens that space so well. That's she why, does, like, yeah. I like there's a bunch of things that Clay does where your first impression is to kind of, like, turn with it. And what I really liked about what Garcia did here is Garcia, like, didn't do that at all. As soon as Clay started to open it all, Garcia was like, nope, and would smash and shut all of that down. I think that's because that's what every single person that we've seen Elizabeth Clay leg lock has like tried to like roll and turn out with it. And as soon as you start to like ride the position with Clay, she's ahead of you by one or more steps and she can enter on the legs. And Garcia is just like, just implements, comes down, stops the game, stops all the space. But I, like you said, I was really impressed that Clay was still able to get as much space as she was able to get. Like the Omoplata attempt wouldn't have come had she not been able to generate that space there. Right. Um, I still think the sustained pressure and like denial of game that Garcia did yeah. gets to the victory. But I do see, I understand why people were upset that Clay did not get the victory. Although Depends. I saw the positional dominance as like. I would have, yeah, I would have also ruled for Gabby, but just. It's kind of like, hey, what's your rule set? You know. But. Yeah, and who's number one? I'm not. I, I don't recall offhand. The who's number one is not fight to win rule set anymore. It is a different. It is a different rule set. I think there's a little more emphasis placed on position in who's number one yeah. than just in. Fight. They definitely talk about positions. Like if you take yeah. the back or sweep or something, the commentators talk about it like it's significant. So yes. I, I definitely. Yeah, think Sanji and Howell. Yeah. Um, I think did a great job on this event. I was super happy with them as always. Yep. Um, so next up. Uh, we got Dante Leone defeating Cody Steele by decision. Uh, this and all of the other non-Gordon matches were 15-minute sub-onlys. Um, Dante just put on a fucking clinic, man. Dude. Like, this match... What Watching this match is why I like watching Dante Leone. Yeah. Like, it's the perfect example of it. He does everything... He he is good at everything. Like it's the wrestling, crazy. like he was, he dude, the body lock and the entry that he had oh my on God, steel. Dude. Yeah, the double leg into a body lock, steel and really well. The body lock, and he goes over and he goes high right. with the arm and he because chops at the head. Sw so Cody, Dante goes for double leg, gets to a body lock, like takes Cody down, and Cody really what like very very savvy starts to get a hook in there and sweep. And Dante gets around it by basically posting on his head and doing like a full cartwheel. Yeah, like a jump over, like a cartwheel pass. Yeah. But in effect, but he does it from the attempt at the reversal from Steel. And it was just like, bro. Yeah. It's just like the, the ability to do that in transition, both guys who are notorious scramblers, like Dante like locks him down, puts the head over, jumps over, and you're like, oh, cool, you've already, like, done the next step now. Yep. Like, holy shit. That would have been two clean-ass points in any uh, point system. In any rule set whatsoever. And uh, so, you know, they, they continue to scramble. Dante with the amazing float passing, going into a front headlock. He, he's attacking the front headlocks like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, instantly. Yeah. Going. Instantly going, like, for a sweep over, you know, just it, just awesome, awesome work here. Cody doing a great job escaping the front headlock. Uh, and 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 coming out on top, you know. But again, now we get to see Dante use his guard work, and we see how good he does that. I mean, we've already seen him basically across the spectrum here. Dante using his hooks to create space and elevate. Um, and this was this was great because eventually, Cody goes. He he's not square. He goes off angle in combat base, and Dante just is like cool. Sits up, gets a single leg, comes back up, is able to chain 
you know, the guard work with the. With it was the so standing. fluid too, it's which so I loved. Fluid. It was just like he just he saw Steele in the position. He went, okay, I'm gonna wrestle up here, and yep. he just like came up, turned up, got he put coat his hips over him so that he couldn't like base out and turn, changed the angle, gets that. And you're like, oh cool, you just like you just scored with that again. You just scored again, and this is this is where this lines up the nastiest fucking move in this in this match. Basically, Dante is now pressure and float passing. Cody has a really good guard, but there's a moment where Dante is able to squash his Z guard. And then Dante does the smoothest windshield wiper uh, into a leg drag position. It's just watch it. It's so slick. It's unbelievably yeah. sick. Gets the I think pass. smooth is the best way to put it. It's, it's just, just like he just he's in the position. It's, it looks like what you would see in like an instructional, like in like a highlight. It was just he's here, he switches over, and he's just exactly where he wants gets, to be. Gets to the leg drag, gets the pass. Um, you know, again, that would have been points in any system. Um, Cody is able to recover quarter guard. And I was honestly super impressed with Steel. Just like yeah, he kept the pace, yeah. and at no point in the match just looked like he had slowed down or he wasn't still like working in to it. fight out. Yeah. He was in like any point in time. If Steel like turned it around, I wouldn't have been super surprised. He was in it the entire time, and yep. most guys we see like versus Don towards the end, like they start to win, especially like Dante matches like this. Yeah, they can't run at this pace the entire time. So right, it's cool to see Steel be able. To and do here's that. an idea to give you both the pace and the breadth of Dante's skill, like. So Cody Steel gets, takes his rash guard off halfway through. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, Cody, Cody gets the the quarter guard and scrambles up. So Dante's in guard. Dante hits a fucking nogi barambolo for the sweep. That's sh- like he's just done everything at this point. Yeah. You know, like he's he's all over the place. Like that. Uh, it's very rare that match again. We we love Dante Leon for a bunch of reasons, but like match like this where it's like cool. You showed you can take a good wrestler down. You showed you can control. You showed you can pass, and you can pass in a variety of different ways. You can maintain top position. You can work from bottom position with sweeps. Oh, and you can bear him bolo, and he slaps a dope-ass guillotine yep. on at one point. Yeah, that the looked, arm in. Yep. looked crazy deep that Cody's able to, like, muscle, not muscle out, but, like, get his head nice and low and, like, address, like, very calmly to get out of, like, you can do it all. Yep. And that's why we love Dante Leon. Yep. And it's like, I want to see him fight Craig Jones again. Yeah, Because they met at Kasai. Uh, and that's that highlight with Craig Jones, Hari Goshing. Yep. That's Dante Leon on yeah. their side. Like, I want to see Dante months. fight everybody. Dante yeah. is fucking amazing. He's young too. He's yeah. 24, 25. Yeah, dude. Like, yep. dude, great match for me, Leon. Leon. Leon takes it via decision. And um, the guilty happened like right with one minute left. And it was just like kind of the, the ceiling factor. You're like, yeah, Dante takes this. Um, yeah. Watch this match. It's yeah. You so, will not be disappointed. You're like never disappointed by a Dante Leon match. Yeah. They're just fun. Next up, we have Gio Martinez defeating Paulo Miao by split decision. This kind of looks like most of their matches. Yeah, it's a good match. Like, it, there's good back and forth. You know, yeah. um, neither of them really settling. Um, just literally constantly destabilizing each yeah. other and, and throwing each other off. Gio looking sharp still, man. Yeah. Like I was I was really impressed with Martinez here. I, did I not, was. I did not think that... I thought, was I thought Paulo look, was going to win. Yeah, I thought he was taking it. I thought he was going to take it pretty easily, honestly. Like pretty, like he was going to kind of positionally get him. Yeah, Gio I was, was wrong in yeah. it. He looked and Gio at one point gets like a guillotine. Yep, and it starts going. Paulo goes, and you see Paulo have to go. Okay, like really have to address it. Yep, and it was probably never in a finishable state, but it was one of those. You're in it. You're in the guillotine. You have to address it and do like. Yeah, if you I'm make not any mistakes pass, there. Gio's like, gonna lock it up. Exactly. And we know Gio has a dope guillotine. Remember the guillotine he hit at Quintet on Hasamrita? Yeah, everyone like, remembers that. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, you know Gio has a dope guillotine. Yep. And so Paulo has to address. And I think honestly, that's probably what wins him the match. There was a toll Gio also went for a toe hold at one point. Um, those don't really count. Yeah, I I know, but like those are the things that particularly in these like amorphous rule sets cement in the in the uh you know judges in the the judges head and it's why geo is so good at at these kinds of rule sets yeah and you know the the meows and this is true of a lot of ibjf perennial champions they still there's like a fundamental difference in mentality where they, it's, it's ingrained to how they play it's in yeah it's, and it's, it's like, in their it's psyche like, i need to get these ads here i need to get these positions before i can attempt subs yeah Gio's like fuck that 
I'm just gonna like yeah, He's I'm like, gonna, I'm gonna headlock dog. you, I'm gonna I'm gonna guillotine you, I'm gonna toe hold you. Anytime you leave something out, Gio's scooping it up. To yeah, do he's something like, "Who am on the bottom now?" Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. It's sub only. Like, I don't, I do not care at all. And like, it's, it's a, and it's a true. Right. I don't care. Like, I'm right. happy to work from this position to work for the next thing that you're going to make available. Meanwhile, well, like, I'm going to make available. Meow is probably only going for the back. Like, I don't think. Did they go? Did he go for a leg here at all? He he might, might have, have a little, a little bit. bit, but it wasn't like, but it was, it wasn't like. It was at no point like, oh, he's going for a toe hold. It was like he's gonna maybe set it up, sort of, you know, take it if it's, it's like there. Take it if it's there, yeah. exactly. It's he like did an- hit a, at the beginning of the match. He almost hit a really nice like Barambola to back take that I was super impressed with. And Geo's like does a does a nice job of getting out of that. And I was like, ooh, this could be really interesting. And then Geo sort of recenters everything. Yeah. And then you know, because the, the, the Barambolo game and the truck battle are more or less the same kinds of battles. So like like yeah yeah, sim- yeah i no, mean I'll give it's, you that. it's it's a leg pummeling inverted i'm i'm battle. specifically trying to work my truck game right now yeah so it's like as soon as i was like ah, and i was like yeah you're totally correct i mean it's just like yeah it's the inverted leg pummeling game. yeah it's an, it so, was an inverted leg pummeling game. so even though like you wouldn't you, you don't think of geo as like a barambolo guy it's like he kind of he understands yeah. that battle very well and i would be yeah. surprised if especially nogi anyone yeah geo's a really really good leg pummeler yeah and yeah. So that makes yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So that was that match. Um, yeah. Looked a lot like the previous matches, but Geo takes this one mm-hmm. mainly with it that guillotine. Yeah. I think I'm totally yeah. I I think he made a very good case for it. So mm-hmm. uh, next up we have Nathalie Hibero defeating Luisa Montero via split decision. This was close. Yeah. Like I watched very this, close. I think I watched this match. I watched it live, and I've watched it once since then. And at the end of the match, I went. Was that good. was really close. It was, and it was, it was a mean, good match. It's it in the results, the split decision, which you should never have a split decision. But if you can make an argument for one, like matches like this are like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really close match. It's really great positional work from Luisa Montero. Yeah. But there, man, like Natalie just throws up. Yeah. More subs that Luisa has to defend. Yeah, and, and I think, it ends with Hibera on a heel hook. So yeah. I think that's what gets it done. Yeah. Um, again, super back and forth match. These these ladies are matched up extremely well. This was a match I wasn't kind of I wasn't kind of sure about uh, when we previewed it last week, but yeah, it was it was a great match. It was, it was I love matches that are really really hard to decide like this yeah. because again, no one really made a mistake here. It's just how do you see it? Yeah. It's this is a great example of like a decision doesn't really give me satisfaction. The satisfaction comes from having a close match, and so yeah. if this was like a draw or whatever, I would have been fine with it because it's still a really good match. So yeah. Um, next up, we have Nikki Ryan submitting Tony Ramos by heel hook in what twenty seconds? Twenty three, I think. Twenty three. Okay, so let's not it, spend more than twenty three seconds. In on my this notes, match. <laughs> in my notes, it had yo. What did you think was gonna happen? Yeah, no. Exactly. Um, again, Tony Ramos. Don't want to take anything away. He's an outstanding wrestler. Don't I, don't, I don't want to disparage this his is a skill different set. Rule set. Yes, that's it. And Nikki Ryan is really good. He immediately pulls. He goes to the single leg X. He goes to the the double like ankle sweep. He gets to the single leg X. He knocks him over. He heel hooks him. That's it. And then he gives a great interview at the end. Yep. That was the match. Um, yeah. That's that's what we what one would expect in this rule set. Um, again, you know Tony Ramos, accomplished wrestler in a wrestling rule set this goes way fucking different yeah in wrestling rule so, set he beats that ass he beats the shit in out of him in jujitsu yeah. he beats that ass like that's right. it's like it's why I don't want to say I'm I'm kind of done with hybrid matches yep because this is how they go I am cool with uh, us like trying to get wrestlers more on the submission oh yeah no shit. sorry no huge props to Tony Ramos yeah, like yeah, coming yeah. in I appreciate that yep I would like I think in a few years we start to see these guys start to clean I house can't at wait ADCC, yeah. to see these guys in ADCC yep, like yeah. I can't wait to see Tony Ramos like okay oh, cool, I got heel hooked six months later with that wrestler mentality of like I'm gonna grind me get so good at this see him come into ADCC trials and like cool I can't get heel hooked now why yeah. it's like because I'm that much better I'm four times better than I was six months ago yep so you know I love to see it I'm happy to see we have more wrestlers in but this match went Kind of how we thought it was going to go. Next up, we got William Tackett submitting Jason Rao by a reverse triangle slash Kimura. I love how this is the opening match, and this is like other cards. This could maybe headline the other cards. Oh, yeah. And we've seen Tackett like, and, and Rao headline other cards for Tackett's title fights. Tackett's a fucking beast, man. Like, Dude. Just, yeah. I love that they'd met before when he was like, when, when Tackett was a blue belt still. That's wild. And then, I'm Tackett's 19 now. And she was like, okay, they met probably 
two to three-ish years ago, four years ago, maybe. And Rao was like, yeah, he's like a lot bigger. He's a lot better than he was. And Tack was like, yeah, I'm a lot bigger. I'm a lot better. Yep. And that was kind of the match. And it was also cool because they both knew each other's game. And Tack was like, yeah, I I'd watched his game and his game hadn't really changed a whole lot when we had first fought. I think Rao took the first match. I don't remember. I think he did. Um, he's like, yeah, his game hadn't changed a ton. So I kind of was able to prepare for that style of game. And like, cool, this is, you know, this is what Rao does. This is what Rao does well. Rao looks for that knee bar. He goes underneath you. And if you can deal with that, Basically, as Rao goes to invert for that knee bar, Taka just jumps over the whole thing and then does a really nice, a super slick entry into like a reverse triangle from the back that Rao is able to turn into. Taka adjusts it to just an inverted, not sorry, not inverted triangle, to a reverse, reverse triangle, triangle from yeah. the front. And then Rao goes to lift out and pull and Taka makes the Kimura grip on the trapped arm and it's just able to lift up. And that's such a hard position to defend from. Yeah. Um, that transition over from Rao's like deep half knee bar sweep is beautiful. Like yeah. that is such a difficult sweep to do. And the way that he the way that Tackett is able to flip his legs here in order to get to that triangle is insanely hard to do. Yeah. So go back and watch specifically that piece. So if you want to get a, a good idea of like why we're so hot on William Tackett, that. Like that is a special move that not a lot of guys can do. Yep. Especially on a guy like Jason Rowe. Like kind of hot on Tackett for the same reason we're hot on Dante. Like just can, really can do, do it all. Everything. Yep. Yep. He just like he just a couple years younger than Dante, and it's like, oh man, if you at twenty four in five years, <laughs> five years. Jesus Christ, man. Like we're getting old, Emil. Like that's why we are on this side. I mean, of the I don't, life. I don't care. Like I just love seeing this shit. So I love seeing it too. So. Again, awesome event. Like I, I love that who's number one exists. I love that Flo's putting on these events. Production was great. Sound was great. Commentary was great. Sanji and Hal did a fantastic job. Um, you know, these are matchups that I want to see. I'm super happy that it happened. I cannot wait for the next one. I think it's going to be in a, I think December is what they said. I don't think they're doing one in November. I think it's December. I forget what December date they gave. Um, might be late November, but regardless, if it's anything like this one, uh, I'm on board. This was great to watch. Any other kind of closing thoughts on the event, Emil? Mm -mm. Yeah, great great event, as usual. Oh, I just lost my notes. All right, let's move it on to our Sug. recap of SUG18, Mason Fowler versus Vinny Magalhaes. Um, yeah. Take it away, Emil. Okay, uh, so Mason Fowler defeats Vinny Magalhaes. Um, this was via fast escape time in overtime. Um, this match, honestly, was not very compelling. Uh, there's a lot of shoving, kind of like... Jiu -jitsu. The regulation match wasn't great. No. Um, at one point, Mason Fowler goes for a front headlock, and then in the overtime, Vinny Magalhaes has two like really interesting arm bars that he starts yeah, he, in. He elects for the spider webs instead of um, the back, which is interesting. Yeah. Vinny's an arm guy. Yeah. I mean, Vinny's a joint guy. I mean, Vinny will definitely choke you. He definitely has the skills, but like all of Vinny's big, huge highlights when he's like performed amazingly have been arm bars. Yep. Like, and I think that he looks good. Props to Fowler does a really great job of getting out of one of those arm bars. His arm's all the way extended and out, um, but Fowler takes the back. Fowler's on the back longer. Fowler has a really good back control game in overtime. He's able to just take it. Oh, wait. Is it fast as escape time? Yeah. It's fast as escape time. Uh, okay, so it's, yeah, it's the reverse. So it used to be... I always get confused with EBI rules because it used to be riding time, and now it's fastest escape time. Right. So it's like whoever has the fastest escape in aggregate so it's just the reverse way of doing that um yep, yep that was the match uh, fowler's still the champion um would love to see him fight hmm. dante yeah i would Kynan, like that colvin i think all those guys would be interesting to see him face um there's a bunch of guys he'd like to see fowler face i just like i needs to be longer I, i'm not super hot on the way that this format is right now the matches need to be longer than five minutes, they especially in a champion match, and they need to get rid of the overtime. Yep. I think universally we're kind of – I'm kind of done seeing, like, super compelling. Like, I would love to see Vinny and Fowler in any other format, but this is kind of like it's a quick match, and then it's an overtime, and then that's your champion. It's like it's – we don't like overtime. We're, I'm, I'm kind of done seeing overtime. Yep. Next match. Kendall Roosing defeats Leah Taylor via armbar. Um, this is in round one of overtime. Just as a squash match by mm -hmm. Kendall. Um, great mount and head control for most of regulation. Just snaps. Just not, wasn't able to get it done in regulation, but you could see it had the match been a little longer than five minutes, probably six or seven minutes, probably would have gotten something done in regulation in overtime. Yep. Quick armbar. Actually, really quick. Like, yeah, really uh, quick. 
like six seconds, I think. Yeah. Something like that. It was. She snatches just it up. Boom. You know, she's definitely the bigger person here, but, you know, looks really good, really controlled. We got William Tackett again defeating Gabriel Checo via neck crank. Holy shit. In uh, two minutes and 50 seconds of regulation. Bro, Damn. so Tackett was in Austin, Texas, his hometown, the day be- two days before, on Friday night. Flies to Oregon, deals with jet lag. Him and Cody Steele both. Then Gabriel Checo, who's a SUG veteran, been on SUG a ton, I think fought for the title at one point in SUG. Dude, Tackett looked amazing in this match. Yeah, so, I mean, the way he gets it done is um, from half guard going body lock, which is interesting. You don't see that a whole lot. Um, but He just yeah. swings around, too. It's yeah. like he just get, makes the angle a little bit, and he's able to just pop his body around the hip, get right to the back, and I went, ooh, okay, let's see his, let's see Checo's defense, basically. And Tackett's just able to lock it in yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. And then... Get the squeeze a little over the face. They called it a neck crank. Uh, it was a jaw choke, yeah. which everything above the neck is the neck. I forget who said that, but I love the quote. Right. Um, and that's, you know, that's definitely one of these. Everything above the neck is the neck. Gets it done pretty quickly in regulation. Looks outstanding. I'm happy to see Tackett featured high on the card here. Um, wouldn't be too against him fighting Fowler, maybe, in the future. That'd be a fun match. Uh, next match, anything more on that match? Mm-mm. Next match, we have Keith Gregorian defeating Rafael Domingos via submission. No arm triangle choke. To choke in two minutes, 12 of regulation. I didn't even recognize Keith. Like, his hair is Dude, very, Dude, they throw. Very long. You got the yeah. throw game like you. Yeah. You're growing it out, too. Uh, Rafael attempting to pass from the knees. Um, he basically starts an over-under pass grip without having actually, like, started to squash one of the legs. And the moment he kind of goes for that underhook of Keith's leg, Keith's like, cool, triangle time. Um, no arm triangle. So yeah. I watched this live the first time, and then I was like taking notes, taking notes, and I watched it again today, and I was watching Keith's story, and I looked at it, and I went, oh, he has no arms in this. Like, this is, this is a I no arm triangle. I didn't know until you mentioned it, yeah. It's a no arm triangle, because it I'm looks sure. like, the setup looks, because lock, Keith locks it up super quick, and then he changed the angle, and then he... Basically, the camera angle looks like she has a regular triangle. And then if you watch it again, I mean, Domingos doesn't have any arms in. And Corin's just able to get in, turn the angle with the arm and the legs, and just finish a norm triangle, like, split second. That's gangster. It's awesome. So it's it's funny that these guys didn't meet at Shugio, and now they've met, you know, and Keith, you know, takes it via sub so quickly. You think in Shugio this could have been like a 90-minute match, and Keith gets it done super quick so again we're super hot with Corian. it's awesome to see him get like a cool nifty sub um we do not i mean i don't know when the last time we've seen a no arm triangle in like a main card of a super fight i can't remember but yeah some, i think sometime in the last year okay it's not a frequent sub though no. so it's cool so uh yeah watch that again because it's a super sneaky no arm triangle next match cody Steele defeats brian neuro via heel hook uh, two minutes and 20 seconds of regulation. Yeah, another really quick one. Just comes Cody. out the back, off the cage. Yeah. Butterfly half, basically, uh, Cody elevates, gets the far leg saddle, inside heel hook, boom. And it was against the cage. Yeah, that was yeah. the interesting thing. I, I like that he used it. I think, I don't think, I always forget, because Cody Steele is the combat champion, Is was was at one point, probably still is, combat jiu-jitsu champion. So I always think that he's fought MMA. And then I always remember him talking about having not fought MMA and they did the training with MMA gloves and slaps. And he was like, now nah, we're not doing this. We're just, we're just training jiu-jitsu when they were training for our combat jiu-jitsu. So I always think that he has a benefit in the cage, but he's not. Not really relevant to this conversation at all, but it always throws me off. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, looks really good. He'll look fighting back-to-back. I mean, one day apart for the weekend in a completely different part of the country. Uh, always props to guys that can do that. Next up, we have Hunter Colvin defeating Emil Fisher via rear naked choke in four minutes and six seconds of regulation. Hunter looked good. This is here. a prodigious beatdown. Uh, Emil plays that game where yeah. he where he lays and he's looking for you to like get. He's looking for you to make too much space to come under and heel hook you. And then Colvin was just like, "Cool, I'm not gonna make the space here, so I'm gonna take a top position. I'm gonna put knee on belly. I'm gonna control the arm." And then he kept falling for the cross side armbar. On Emil, and Emil would get out and then work the game again. Yeah, so I was impressed with Emil's frames here. So it's it's clear that he has developed like, like he he can he can create some space here. But I think Hunter was good at transitioning more to like north south, but keeping just enough weight down. Yeah, where 
it's it a, wouldn't allow for the full inversion. It's to a similar it. game to what we saw Kokorian implement uh, a couple weeks ago in Sapatero against Fisher. And Fisher played this really similar game. Is that cool? You go to the north south um, and you pressure sh- Fisher's shoulders down. He's going to have a more difficult time getting his shoulders off the mat to invert on you or right. revert underneath you. And Coven seemed to have also kind of figured that out. Right. Um, and Coven again is, you know, also a two hundred and five pound guy, and yep. you know he just he sort of figured that out. Eventually gets to the back, throws in the rear naked choke, turns it a little bit, and, yeah. and gets the finish. I think the thing that like was kind of like, all right, this is this is extremely one sided. Is Hunter repeatedly gets to mount, which we know that Emil sort of gives up, gets the Americana grip to do the far side armbar, does that three times, and Emil escapes, and then Hunter is like. If you keep making this decision, a, a good savvy grappler is going to make adjustments, and Hunter does exactly that. So he gets to mount, gets the Americana grip, and now he does this really great drill where you yank the arm like you're going for an arm bar, but if you put your foot on the mat and really yank, you can pull the person into back yeah. control. Basically, the back control take was the back take was really really nifty. So it's here. it's great. It's it's a savvy move. It's like all right, if you're going to keep letting me get here. I'm gonna make those adjustments, and that's what a you know that's yeah. what Hunter does. That's why I'm really, really excited to see Hunter how he does at his first black belt major for Pans this coming this coming weekend. Yep. Um, in the gi because we don't see, we don't see Hunter a ton in the gi, but you know uh, it's it's cool to see him take a victory you know ahead of his first major debut. Yep. So rear naked choke, body lock, finish. Uh, next up, Aaron Teagues defeats Alex Larmy via cross lapel choke in regulation. Super happy that Sug features. At least a gi match a card. I do appreciate that. They're a little, a little shout out to like the gi community. It's not just a no gi only show in the cage. Um, you know, I'm always, I'm always a fan of that. Glad to see Aaron Teague get it done for the gi people. Andy Varela defeats Nick Ronan via neck crank in overtime. Andrew Alexander defeats Pablo Alfonso via rear naked choke in regulation. Alan Sanchez defeats Justin Rennick via rear naked choke in overtime. So that does it for a recap of SUG 18. Any kind of closing thoughts? No, it's, again, compelling, uh, compelling matchups. Um, again, would be great if matches were six or seven minutes and get rid of the EBI overtime. Yep. That would be dope. I'd love to see it. But uh, again, I'm, I'm super happy with the matchmaking. They've Sug has really upped the matchmaking recently, and I'm a huge fan of that. Just a couple more changes, and it it's such a dope show. Yep. So uh, that's all I got. Let's move on to the recap section or the preview section. All right, so moving to the previews, the 29, 2020, God, I'm trying to go back to last year, 2020 oh, no. IBJJF pans. Uh, we are going to do what we usually do for this and preview the black belt adult divisions um, and basically talk about who we think can take it. We like to do this when the brackets are out, but it is October 5th, currently Monday, and the brackets don't get released to the 7th. They were releasing brackets, I think, the week before for a couple events last year. It might have been just Worlds, uh, so we were able to preview them, but we are not so lucky right now. Uh, but we do have at least registrations, and registration has closed, so there's not going to be any additional names coming in between now and the time of the event. Uh, let's kick it off with the Roosterweight division. Uh, how do you guys want to do this? There's like a bunch of different ways we can do this. I don't want to read through just all of the names. We usually read through some of the select names to potentially talk about where we think the finals are going to go or who we think will take the division. We can just talk yeah. about the people. We don't have to talk about like favorites because it's it's impossible to we tell about the bracket. Yeah, yeah. We can't bracket. just guess. It's like, oh, these two guys in the division, cool, they're match one. Like they're not <laughs> yeah. going to be in the finals now. So, so IBGD, yeah, single elimination, pans, big deal. It's in the gi. Top person in adult male rooster. Actually, we've covered a bunch in fight to win, and you like recently you actually rolled with him. I did, and he whooped that ass in right before. <laughs> uh, Lucas, yeah. yeah, Lucas Panera is in here. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, a guy you know. Yeah, form jujitsu. Lee Rosenfeld, one of my professors. He's a fucking beast. Uh, is the first time he's competed a major in black in a while? Um, I'm pretty sure he competes like pretty regularly. Okay. He, he definitely does opens all the time. I'm pretty sure he's done like pans level stuff before. Okay. Um, so he's just a, he's one of those like all around grapplers, good at wrestling, a tremendous guard. Um, kind of technically also from the Atos family, he was AOJ, yeah. uh, before yeah. coming form. So him and Lucas probably have rolled a bunch together. So yeah, because Lucas is Atos, and he was from Atos HQ. Now he's in Atos in uh, Dallas, Houston, Dallas. Yeah, in Dallas, uh, he wins that affiliate out of there, and at least down here in Baltimore. Um, other big names: we got Willis Nunez, we yeah. got uh, Rolando Henderson Jr. is in here, and we got Francisco uh, Borges. 
in here as well. That is the rooster weight division. I honestly, this is super hard to call for me. Um, yeah, I mean, without we've, Bruno or we've, Mikey, you kind of got to know. Like, I don't really know who's going to take we've it. We've seen the most out of Pinero on the. Like, He's been so active recently on the like professional circuit but it's so. it's times like this when you know bruno and mikey are not in divisions where people that you don't know start pulling through and right. so yeah. panero is i think the, the choice here but we see he's know, been so active recently and like that for me i always kind of forget like i always have the mma thing in my head where it's like activity means a lot yeah, yeah. in jujitsu it's not as relevant sure. but it's still like guys that are super active i still always think like okay a super active guy i'm usually going to pick yeah. over everyone else the division's primed for someone to, to step up and start taking I'm shit picking over Lee, though because that's that's my professor. Well, so. You would be dumb not to, Emil. Uh, on to the light featherweight division. We got Hiago Gama Souza. Uh, at the beginning, we had Dennis Presley Jr., uh, Altos Jiu Jitsu. He's a guy out of um, Root. He was out of Roots formerly uh, under Christopher Wood Mancy in, D- in um, not DC. Philly. Oh, shit. Philly. Yeah, he was yeah, a former goodness. fight to win, uh, belt holder at Brown Belt. Like we've I'm seen ignoring everything you're Dennis saying Presley. right now. I'm looking at Josh Cisneros is in this fucking division. Mm-hmm. That's great. I didn't know he was a black belt already. Oh, shit, he is. Yes. I didn't think he was black belt. So Josh right? Cisneros, if you don't know who that is, that is I the know. dude that had that highlight teepee choke at Fight to Win It. I think that was at Purple. Yeah, it was Back a Purple when he was belt. At purple belt he but was that was only like maybe spider. a year and a half ago. Mm-mm. No. I think that was like, <laughs> that was like two. No. <laughs> dude, we've been, this is show 152. No, it really wasn't this, that long ago. We've been doing ago. this show in November. It really wasn't that long ago. In a month for three years. I know. It wasn't that long ago. I, dude, IBJJF rules. He would have had to have been a brown belt for a minimum of 18 months before getting promoted Fuck to black. Me. Are you serious? You're getting old, Emil. <laughs> oh Time keeps God. it ticking on. <laughs> so Josh Cisneros, he was on Spider before um, like COVID hit, and then they actually canceled the 165-kilogram oh, yeah. division because they couldn't get some of the American competitors. They didn't cancel it. They made they changed the registrations, and he and a Brazilian competitor didn't end up getting over there. I don't know if you saw this highlight, uh, but basically he slept a guy in, what, 14 seconds with a TP choke? Something like he just like It was like he just like didn't butt screw. He just came down and just like with a TP choke in, squeezed, and just like choked this dude. Like slept him. And he's a super highlight reel guy. Like we've seen him, you know, Usually on fight to wins and even in majors he does and opens, have, he has flashy submissions mm-hmm. and he's yeah, good. His really positional good. game is good. It's super fun. I, yeah, I had no idea he was a black belt. That's awesome. Congratulations to him. Um, I can never pronounce this individual's name. Siraj, Siraj Budram. Mm-hmm. Budram's in here. Uh, Carlos Alavela de Silva's in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, Paula Miao. Yeah. yeah, is also well, here. Yeah. I think we have our front runner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's not pick against Paula Miao. Nah. Um, we thought he had a match this weekend versus yeah, Geo. Geo, yeah. Where he looked. At, I realize we're doing this. So if you don't know, uh, Zach's here. Zach's not going to do the recap, so we're doing this in reverse, yep. which always like fucks me up because I'm <laughs> I'm used to doing the show in the other direction, causing trouble, causing trouble, Zach. So yeah, I'm probably going to pick me out in this one. Yeah. Um, he looked honestly decent this weekend, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him like take another major. Yeah. 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 Never pick against me out. Never. Let's see on the Isaac featherweight division. Isaac Doderlin, this hell is, yeah! This is a fun division. We got this is gonna be in fun. Le- in men's featherweight. We have Isaac Doderlin. We have Kennedy Masayel Cabrinha Jr. We have uh, Federico Alves. We have Gianni Grippo. We have Daniel Moreno. We have let's see. We have Joao Miao. Uh, we have uh, no, that's uh, Joao Mendes. Joao Mendes. Oh, right. That's, he's he's repping Autos. Yep. Different Joao. <laughs> I see the f- on the A. Mateus, just like, Mateus Gabriel's Mateus in here, Gabriel. too. Yep. Holy Sam shit. Sam the Guy is in here. Shit. We just saw Sam the Guy a couple weeks ago versus this Johnny right. Grippo on this Fight to Win. This is fucking stacked. Uh-huh. This is a crazy division. There's 28 total in the division on top oh of just my being God. stacked with names as we well. We got uh, Carvalho's in this division as well. Uh, let's see who else is this division. This is a crazy division. That's fucking bonkers. Yeah. So oh who, do you, my who, God. who are you picking? Isaac Dordalin. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. You picking Dordalin in this one? I think depends on which Dordalin shows up for the day i might i wouldn't be su- surprised if grippo takes it yeah i wouldn't be surprised so dodolin and grippo have a really interesting rivalry i think grippo was beating dodolin and i think dodolin turned a corner at ajp um, last year and he just kind of stepped up a level and just has looked really really consistent yeah. um whereas grippo's just he's like has the tools to like to beat anyone he's just been like more inconsistent we saw him on fight to win ahead of this versus samuel and the guy and he lost that decision i think the big thing is in the bracket 
right? Yes. Yeah. Also in the bracket. So. Sam Nagai is also a fucking, he's a dark horse here. He's been a fucking beast lately. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. In fact, didn't we see Sam versus Johnny Grippo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, okay. and he, he yeah, won a decision won. over Grippo. I was about to say. Yeah, so, like two weeks ago, like last week, I think. Yeah. And in... The fights that I've seen Sam in lately, he's just been he's just been steamrolling people. He's, he had all the matches on Subversive there too. Yeah, where he looked really good at Subversive, and he had a foot. He had like a good ankle lock win. Yeah, like he's an exciting guy. I still kind of want to go Kennedy here. Nah, I'm going Isaac. <laughs> I would love to see a Kennedy Isaac like finals matchup. That w- yeah. I assume they're going to put on either side of the bracket. Um, that would be a really exciting. I mean, I, yeah, matchup. I think this is, this is really heavily dependent on the bracket. Though. Yeah, there's I, so 100%. many good oh, yeah. players. This is this one of those bracket. like, okay, cool, these guys are second round, awesome. Yeah. Like, this well, I mean, this they're both they're it. both repping a lot. It's Alianza, so you know they could be. What was that word? Alianza. That's how they say alliance. Is it? Yeah. So like alliance, uh, bro. This is America. Yeah. Alliance. <laughs> Alliance. <laughs> uh, so they're going to be on opposite sides of the yeah, bracket. That's right? way more sexy than how we say it. I know, right? Alianza. Alianza. Yeah, we're from that's, Alianza. That's most things in Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. It's they, a got sexy that, language. they got that flair. Yeah. But um, yeah, they're going to be on opposite sides. I forgot so, right? about that. Thank you, um, Neil, for remembering how brackets are formed. Yeah. So yeah. is, I mean, so. so oh, we're and in, Grippo's Alliance Grippo's International. Grippo's Alliance, technically, yeah. Well, he's Alliance International, so that. They you they will usually seed so we'll have a one on one. We'll have Fr- uh, Federico Alves and Grippo on opposite sides, and we'll have Kennedy and Isaac on opposite sides. So potentially, um, I I'm we have a strong chance of a of a Kennedy Isaac finals match. Yeah. Oh oh. By the way, Mateus Gabriel is also in here. Well, yeah, I said that, yeah, yeah, Did you? Yeah. Actually, Mateus, Mateus Gabriel is a fucking. I think beast. Mateus. I want to pick yeah. Mateus here. Yeah. I'm picking yeah, Mateus. I didn't pretty... see him because I saw the Mateus Gabriel Panero Barros and I missed that it was Mateus Gabriel. Thanks, uh, I appreciate you saying that yeah. for <laughs> listing all of the names. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mateus Gabriel. I'm, I'm going to go to Mateus Gabriel here. Uh, what does he represent? He's Czech man. Like he's also again opposite side of Sam, of Sam the guy. Yeah. This is going to be fucking gonna awesome, be dude. By the way, it's going to be a good a good division. Um. Let's see. So moving on. God, that's a giant division. 28. It's the biggest division. Oh, yeah. Brian Maheka also in that division. Well, in the lightweight division, we have 22. Starting yeah. off with Johnny Tama. Uh, we have uh, Mauricio Gomez in here. We have Rafael Dos Santos. We got Jonathan Alves. Uh huh. Yeah. Damn. We got and Michael Jonah- Lear. And Jonathan Gracie. Dude. And Michael Lear Jr. Fucking A. Jeremy dude. Jackson. Kim Terra. Kyle Terra's brother. Kevin Melendez. Uh, we have Hanato Canudo and Edwin Najmi. <laughs> Damn, dude. And we got uh, Ricky Schlemeglia and uh, Bruno Carvalho and Marcelo Andre. Jesus Christ, yeah. dude. So based on no bracket, who are you picking? <laughs> I, that's too many fucking... Yeah. Canudo and Najmi, like, I feel like they're going to meet up at some point. And that's going to be fire. Didn't they just fight? They fought in fight to win. I fight could, to win. I could see, I could see ago, Canuto I getting to semis or finals. Yeah. I don't see Edwin getting there i totally see edwin again he's been active he's been so active recently but he i mean how many deep runs has he made in majors how often do we see him at majors that's what i'm saying yeah like he's a super fight guy nowadays but he's you know all through his color bell ranks like he was murdering he can definitely do it then you have michael lear jr and john atis gracie Jonathan here gracie yeah a... like i think john Atis, i would i'm I would not surprise me. And Jonathan Alves. See, Jonathan Alves is like... <clears throat> he's I got mean, the IBGDF style. Like, you know what game he's going to play. He's he's taking a deep run. Yeah. He's taking a I deep run. I might pick Jonathan Alves yeah. on this. Yeah. Man. Strategically, I think that he might be best positioned. The, the AOJ the guys just have consistently far. the strongest game for the majors. Yep. Put the mic in front of your face. Oh, yeah. yeah, I moved. I we moved that. so that I could see. It's all good. It'll yeah. hopefully be good. If it's not, I'll have to adjust the audio, and it'll be terrible for like an hour. Um, Just cost you an hour. It, it is. It's editing. It, it, this <laughs> is my life. After on Mondays for the show, it's like cool. The show's up in four hours. Better get to editing. Go go go. Um, dude, we have like six hours whenever the show goes up. I got plenty of time. <laughs> so who? So you're picking Alves? I think Alves. Uh, let me. Let's... Go up to the top again. Yeah, we got Marceo just, Andre, Kim Tara. We got crazy. Michael Lira Jr., Jonathan Gracie. We got Johnny Tama. That's, yeah, man, this is tough. It's always like, again, I have not seen, we've only, Alvis has only had 10 matches, 11 matches at Black Belt since yeah. he got promoted. Yeah. Like, we haven't, we've seen him murdering at Brown Belt. I mean, yeah. that match with him at Spider versus Shane Jamil Hill Taylor, where he just bare and boloed and like got the collar choke in a minute. Yeah. Is just, always going to be to remember. 
AOJ guys, I, I'm I'm starting to bank on a little bit more. They're coming into the black belt strong, and and for majors, I feel like the the strategically they're well positioned. Their, their to games make it also far line up game. perfectly with what the IBJJF kind of yep. format looks for. Yep. What's interesting now is that um, I think. Is this the first majors post official AOJ and Atos split? Mm-hmm. Yep, this is so, the first one. Yeah. So AOJ and Atos no longer are going to be sharing points. Sharing points, or probably not spread out on brackets either. Yeah. It it wouldn't surprise me to still see them spread out on brackets, just with how the politics of the bracketing goes, and because the big teams get to weigh in on brackets. Yeah, but it. It'll be interesting to see how that. Plays oh, you know, out. definitely. I think, but I think it'll, it was still going to be a little bit. It, it, I think functionally, it's going to look very similar, um, with a couple of them, like maybe a division or two, we see them first or second round. Yeah. But I still think it's going to look pretty similar for at least a year or two. Um, Damn. Also stacked division. Yep. Yeah, I didn't make a pick on this one, and you're gonna, we're going to kind of blaze past that I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, on to the middleweight division. We got Andre Nascimento. We got Rena Mutliab. We have Vinicius Wong. We have Ronaldo Jr. Uh, in this division, we have Guerra Barbosa, Nascimento in here. We have uh, Jackson Jr. We got, let's see, who else are the big names we got in here? Mm. Felipe Silva and Levi Jones Leary. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is over with and done. There's 25 <laughs> people in this division. I mean, it was just like, no, Levi Jones Leary, pick them. That's him. really all you, that's, I don't. I don't know. I'm just concerned. The world's thing makes me concerned. The world's 2019 concerns me. Oh. Like that double DQ at a major like concerns me. I, you, it doesn't concern you that he like basically swept all the other majors? I mean, I'd probably take bands. I mean, I'm still picking Levi Jones Leary, but this is middleweight, and I'm fairly certain that's at least up one or possibly two weight classes Isn't he for him. Is he a light feather? Or yeah, is he, he's usually... I thought he, he was light. light. Let me see. He's either... I think he's definitely not... Middle. At his normal mi- weight class, he's definitely I, not middle. How old I don't is he? know if he's 20? up one or two. Is he twenty? He's no, young. He's like twenty-two. And here, I, I will answer both of these questions. But <laughs> I, a, let's just I'm speculate inclined, on something we look up very easily. I'm, for no I'm inclined reason. to 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 go with Zach here. Like I, I feel like it, he's usually at a lighter weight class. It changes up the the prediction. I, I'm not as strong on Levi Jones Leary well, up a weight he, class because I don't know if we've seen him. Yeah, maybe there's too many people in. Um, there's not any unity guys. There's not any unity at so, lightweight either. He was at 76 kilograms. What is that? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> you, you're the one who knows this shit. Uh, not going to lie. Uh, oh. We've been doing this show for years and years. I still don't, off the top of my head, this is a Josh question that he, I asked. He has gone up. Yeah. Okay. So he was fighting in the like 76, 77 kilogram range. Mm-hmm. And now he's he's up at 82. And he's been at 82 since Spider and Subversive. Okay. So, well, Spider was a, a split bracket, so Subversive yeah. would be the first time that he intentionally. When Subversive up. was a split, because you had a guy that you had a guy that was first three, you had a guy at a lower weight class and a guy at a higher yeah. weight class, so it still would have been under. Yeah. And I think he was the smaller of the two guys for you. So it's not like he was going in at that mm-hmm. weight class; he just happened to be in maybe a he broader was comf- weight maybe he was class. Maybe he's comfortable there. The yeah. bigger weight. I don't know. That's I'm super curious. At a about major, this. we haven't seen him at middleweight before. It doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he's still at least phenomenal. Black. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. He's still phenomenal, and I'm still probably picking him for this bracket. It's but... just a big division, and a big division with guys like like Muliab and like Andre Nascimento and like Rolando Jr. Like Rolando Jr. Rolando is going to outsize him significantly. I was going to say, and if if Rolando Jr. and Levi Jones Leary end up in a match together, that size difference is going to look crazy because Ronaldo Jr. looks big for middle. Yes, and I don't see well, Levi he's, Jones he's Leary super lanky for the weight class too, which gives you like that extra like yeah. distance there. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm so, super curious. That's kind of the match that I'm most interested in in the gi because again, Ronaldo's yeah. primary gi player. We've seen him in no gi recently versus Wagner Hosha at fight to win. That was supposed to be versus Gordon, but Gordon got COVID yeah. and then so pulled out and Wagner replaced him there. And that match was kind of like a weird match. But again, he's much more of a gi player and he's looked really good at brown, looked good at black yep. too. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, middle's I, a, middle's I, a, you know what? I'm picking Levi just because yeah. I think it'll be funny to watch him bear and bolo the big boys and then get them say, back. It's it's an interesting weight class jump to see too because middle's so I think I feel like middle is where I start to feel like the game plays a little bit differently. We talked about this good. when we covered yeah, heroes. We had um, we talked about the difference in like the lower weight class, the lower belts that you were seeing. You know, guys at middle, you started to see less of the bear and bolo and less yeah. of the lapel work. Is more it was just a different game as yeah. guys got a little bigger. 
um, which is kind of contrast what I'm going to talk about earlier when I talk about Gordon and his weight class, and Emil's going to give me shit over the size difference. <laughs> As you've already heard that at this point. Um, on, <laughs> on to the adult male medium heavy bracket. Uh, on this division, we got... Um, I kind of blanked out there for a second. Gabriel Almeida. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we got Jake Watson here. We got Manuel Habermar in here. And we got Marillo Santana in here. I, I'm honestly... I kind of want to go Habermar. Can yeah. you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. Uh, Octavio Souza's in here. I just strolled past everything in front, of, in front of Emil and didn't give him a chance to read. Yeah. Yo, please, yeah. every GDF, give us a brackets like yeah, three days man. earlier, man. That's awesome. all I want. It's just like, give me a bracket. Give me brackets. It's a lot like, easier to talk about this. A little bit earlier. Like two days. Just like, happen to do it on like a Sunday night, Monday morning, because we happen to record the show on Monday, <laughs> you know, after Base your plans around us. Look, I'm just saying, like, who else is going to talk about the bracket on a show that goes out to a ton of people? Like, yeah. we are. So give us the bracket. Like, just three, do it. Three days early. They have the bracket already. Like, we know what it's going to be. Just just put it out. Do what Third Coast does and give us the bracket, like, weeks Two in weeks, advance yeah. so we can look at it and, like, talk about it internally. Um, I don't know. For this one, I really want to go Hibmar. Yeah, I think Hibmar is probably my pick, too. I, but. I just think consistently with the game he plays in the Gi, Hibmar. Um, I've been really impressed with Jake Watson, newer black belt. We've seen him on Fight to Win. He looked really good versus Ronaldo, like, tied him up with the lapels. Um yeah. We'd be oh yeah, Jake Watson also was going to be the commentator for ADCC uh, 2021. Hmm. He got the commentary gig, so um, and then Rillo's always a factor too. Yep. Yeah. But I still want to go Hibmar just because I think Hibmar has looked better and better recently, and just in general looked really good. Under the heavyweight division, we have Gustavo Batista, we have Dominic Bell, we have Nasia Lionab, we have Michael oh, no, Michael Musumeci is not in here anymore. <laughs> um, let's see, we have Hernando Harlando de Jesus Montero, we have Patrick Gonzalez. Uh, we have Hunter Colvin, and I talked to Hunter today after his win over Emil Fisher at SUG, and he said this is going to be his first major as a black belt. Yeah. And we typically see Hunter as a no-gi guy, but I know he does do the gi, and so it's cool to see him jumping in the gi. Uh, right below him, we have Roberto Jimenez as well. Yeah, i not going to lie. I kind of want to pick Jimenez here. In the gi, I'm picking Jimenez here. Yeah, he's, he's struggled just, in no gi here and there he's recently, with, with but yeah, in the gi specifically and toe holds. And other than that, like that back take game in the in the gi, and like yep. look what he looked like in Ke- the Keenan match yep. at who's number one, his first black belt match. Like, I kind of want to pick. I think he's definitely still a dark horse in this division, but I kind of want to pick him. Yeah, I I think I go with Jimenez in this. Uh, in the gi, he looks really good still. I think and. And he's playing a unique game at heavy still. Yeah. And I think that that's a factor. He's in, also in really this. fast at heavy too, which I think is like underrated. We talked about yeah. him um, a lot. But just like his speed at that weight is a little unusual. Like most yeah. guys at heavy at, don't move quite as quick. He's also super young. He's super explosive. And yeah. he's got that super refined double underhook back take game that he just seems to be able to implement. He can pull. As soon as he gets grips here, he can get you into the closed guard. He can play from the closed guard. That's kind of not the meta anymore. I think he may trip some guys up that just aren't used to dealing with a super heavy closed guard player at heavy. Yeah, I, I see his pathway to victory, although definitely can have a stomach. I think block. his style plays into IBJJF rules pretty nicely too, at least in the gi. Interestingly, uh, Gustavo Batista has a win over Jimenez at the first yep. Third Coast Kumite in the finals. So yep. that'll be that was no, that was no gi. It was right? uh, yeah, all yeah. no gi. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Who are you, who are you picking? Yeah. Are you picking Gustavo? I'll go with Jimenez. I think Jimenez is just, he's been super active. And he has been active. He's, like, his his game is, he's so good at, at, at implementing his game against people and imposing it. Like, you know. And he can, he's, he can and also he can capitalize on little things. Very too. different kinds of games, too. You know, he can, yeah. he can do that insane close guard. Uh, he can stand with people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. He's just tricky. He's fast and he's tricky. Yeah. And he can also like sub you at any point. And he knows how to score, he knows how to maintain. Like there's there's places you can definitely beat him. Yeah. But I don't think anyone can consistently like do it in the gi. In the gi. In yeah. the gi. In no gi, yeah. like yeah, the, the lug locks are there. I'm yeah. really excited to see him in a majors tournament format to see how he changed because like how in, that gas tank is yeah Not the, show what that gas tank is the gas 16 tank. man bracket i'm i'm less worried about that and more just like i'm not, I'm not on the other side i'm, I'm i think that's a benefit to him like, oh, i don't yeah. think he's gonna get tired well i mean well, we'll see. in in third coast he does like the explosive like 
I mean, he just train wrecks people. Yeah. But, you know, in the, lo- what is 10 minute matches, mm-hmm. multiple 10 minute matches, and now ads and like subtle things like that, does he go for a more conservative strategic approach or does he still just i mean he's no out? stranger to the IBGDF format oh I no, think no, no he no, double no. golded in like most of the stuff at brown yeah. yeah um you mean straight up monster so it wouldn't surprise me especially being so active in this time to have him just make the jump to black and then like really not miss a beat yeah i mean it kind of it, it wouldn't surprise you to have him hit a stumbling block but it also wouldn't surprise me to see like oh cool he won pans like Okay, I, I can totally see his pathway to victory here for Pans. And yeah. again, I've seen him. He's been so active. I usually will tend to pick the guys that are also super active. I also Nathan Mendelson's in this bracket as well. Um, it's a contender for sure. Yeah, always a contender. Any any kind of closing thoughts on the, on the heavyweight bracket? Mm-mm. On the heavyweight division, that bracket. On the super heavyweight division, we got uh, Felipe, Felipe Andrew. Andrew, baby. We got Augusto Sorez Santos here. We have uh, Arnaldo Maidana's here. We got Aaron Tex Johnson. We got Keenan Cornelius, and we got Devontae Johnson. Jesus. Yep. That's actually That's good. This is one of the most stacked, heavier brackets yep. that I've you know, seen we've in seen a long time. It's a total of nine people, and... Half of them are <laughs> names that people, could pull it off, and four of them can easily yeah. like you know. I see like Tex can break anyone's leg. Yeah, uh, Keenan can jujitsu and lapel guard anyone in the world. Devante looked pretty good and like just as explosive and bull rushes guys. Uh, let's see, Roberto Torbas is in here as well. Um, Ronaldo Maidana, I mean, consistent. We've seen him on third coast. Like he's looked good. Felipe Andrew beat Felipe Keenan Andrew at beat Keenan. Euros. Only dude to ever sub Keenan. And, and it was in the last been, major that happened. Still a while ago, but it was the last major that happened. And Holy Felipe's shit. been just like randomly subbing people like Flash up. Like Barbosa. Like he yep. subbed the Hulk in like yep. the weirdest entry to a triangle ever. Yep. It was just like, oh, your hands are here. Hey, I got triangle anyway. Like, how'd you do that, Felipe <laughs> Andrew? Well, we we watched that over and over and over again. I'm just like, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um so This is a fun one. I'm super excited for I mean, bracket. I'm I'm Going with Keenan here, like ah, something to consider though is that Keenan was playing by the rules during COVID stuff. Like I'm sure he was training some way, but this is also the first major since lockdown things happened, and Keenan was vocal on at least he was vocal on social media yeah, about sticking to the rules. And I think he was sticking to the rules. And his camp is in San Diego where things have been real tight. Whereas some of these other guys are probably we're have, have an extra nah, three months of training. I would yeah. say that like if anyone's style is the most resilient to like being a little out of shape, Keenan's is, you know, like being able to like I tie mean, people up. Yeah. Out of He's shape. Sure. But, tricky. but rusty is the thing that happens at every level too. Right. And his game is so technical that timing is, is a thing. It's a factor. I don't know. I, I, I feel think, like I can't take Keenan on this. I also think that he can like, he just can bullshit you with a grip. That's and if, if, and if he, true. like, grabs something, it's like, oh, it's not quite the grip he wants, he, he knows how to sit there for an extra 30 seconds to, like, finagle it That's to where it feels fair. right. That's what I'm saying is he, I, he can dictate pace better than a lot of people in I terms of slowing can, it down. Yeah. I think Keenan can probably tie up people better than any other person in the world. Oh, like, yeah. he's beatable. Yeah. Very, very hard to beat. It's doable, but if he really wants to just like tie you up, yeah. unless you're like Leandro, maybe kind of Morgali. I also sometimes. wonder it's getting to the stage of the game, you know, in the in the progression of jujitsu and how these things work. Lapel guards and his his videos have been out for and, and been popular for a significant enough time Five now years. that I wonder. And, well, and that, but it really surged in popularity about a year and a half ago, right? Like that's when people. Outside of Keenan and his friends, I think to see like the widespread implementation of it at right. like big events. But I feel like yeah. you've been seeing it like used from a certain lot individuals, for about, yeah, for, a long for, about, time. for about two years. Yeah. yeah, okay, you're right. I think. But like a year and a half since it really, I feel like really kind of blew up wide, and I'm starting to wonder when people are gonna catch on and start creating good defenses for it and then that game is going to not work as well and it might not be now especially because of the lockdown situations people haven't been able to play as much but it's coming up i mean as of now i can't think of people who implement like where i've seen lapel guard is people supplementing their games with yeah. it and less like building their game around it the same way that he does sure yeah, he's the only guy at the black belt level that I think consistently 
ha- <clears throat> has like a full scope of lapel guard where it's like he can transition. He's going to play lapel guard the entire time, yeah. and he has an answer for everything with a lapel somewhere. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think I understand the point you're making. It's, I mean, things are going to start getting less effective for him probably within the next year to two, I is my guess. But, you know, yeah. he's going to evolve the game as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I still, with all that considered, I think I still take Felipe Andrew. I think I take Felipe Andrew over Keenan. I feel this. like Keenan doesn't make the same mistake twice. Mm-hmm. I feel like sure. he's going to go into the Felipe Andrew match with like, because like Keenan's a smart dude. I mean, he's not going to get triangled again, but that no, doesn't mean he's going to come I, out I with the like win. I, I would pick Keenan in the, if the first match had not happened. I would still pick Keenan in that matchup, just given how Felipe Andrew matches up with Keenan. Like, sure. I feel like Keenan's going to be able to get the sweep off. He's going to implement top position. He's going to be able to get around the guard. Like, I, that's what I feel like is going to happen with Keenan's game. Hilarious is this complete uh, tangent. What happens when Felipe Andrew meets up with Tex Johnson? <laughs> like, who, who yeah. yeah. breaks off whose leg? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, right. In the, that's, that's actually a fun match. That's actually in the gi. Yeah, in the, that's actually in the gi, that'll really be really interesting. In no gi, I, I probably give it to Tex, Tex but yeah. but gi, that Eve, actually, gets a little honestly, bit interesting. Either one, I actually really want to see that match now. Yeah, like, that's a good match because both guys are like both guys are pr- actually Felipe Andrew. I think is primarily a gi guy. Tex is primarily a no gi guy, but they both do enough in both that I'm super interested. Okay, yeah, do it twice in one night. <laughs> you flip a coin gi or no gi. They go, and then at the end of the night, you do it again. Put in it the together. Other <laughs> and yeah. then it's best of three. I don't know. I don't know how that goes. But, yeah, it's a, a lot of these brackets are really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm not picking against Keenan in this one. You guys can pick whoever you want. I, I, d- I, told, just, you, I told you I picked Keenan. I'm also picking Keenan. I mean, I'm, going with the, <laughs> I'm going with the team on this one. I'm picking against Keenan okay. so that next week I can. <laughs> You're like, fuck it. I don't care who it is. It's not Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> you pick Felipe, right? Yeah, I'm going to go with Felipe. That's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, on the ultra heavyweight division, uh, we have Max Jimenez. Jimenez. Max Jimenez. We got uh, Johnny Gonzalez. Uh, we have Austin Wade. And we have uh, we have uh, Leonardo Henrique in here as well. I take Jimenez. I, I think Jimenez here. Jimenez had that really close match with Bouchesha that yeah. always sticks in my head because he was like he was beating Bouchesha, and then Bouchesha was like, "Well, I got to win," and then just pulled <laughs> it out of nowhere. Did like, that thing that Bouchesha does? But in but the for I some reason, win, really. yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, that match. Whenever I think of Jimenez in the gi, I always go to that match because yeah. it was like. He was, like he was taking it to him. He was taking it to him. And I was yeah. like, yo, this might be like the time that Bouchesha, I like can't pull it out. Don't play yourself, man. And then <laughs> don't play yourself. And, and then, then he, pulled he it fucking out. did. But yeah. Jimenez always looks good in majors, though. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. He always yeah. looks good in majors. And with that performance versus Bouchesha, like yeah. I do not, I, I'm going to, I'm going to pick him here pretty easily. Um, again, ultra heavy is always a weird, always has weird matchups, but I, I feel like, um, I feel good about Jimenez here. He's just weird. he's young, he's big, and he's really impressed me in the past. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'm ready for the women. Awesome. Moving on to the adult female light featherweight division. Excited for this bracket. Bracket of four: Talita Alencar, Patty Fontes, Misa Bastos, and Anne Marie Kanab. That's it's going to be awesome. Yeah. No matter you how you see- break it. Bastos's match last week. I'm in the picking finals. Bastos. I'm picking man. Bastos as well. Yeah. Versus Jessica Khan because of that. At AJP at the I mean, Miami. Yep. I feel like it's the past almost two years now. It's just been a fucking highlight reel for yeah. Misa Bastos. Yep. Like, dude, in the finals of the Miami Grand Slam for AJP two weeks ago, she fought Jessica Khan. Jessica Khan started off the match with like a really nice triangle setup. Triangled Misa Bastos. Misa like worked out of it and then finished the match. Got to the back. Got to like a dope like. Like choked from the back and finished, and it was just this beautiful sequence. After watching like how crisp she looked at AJP a couple weeks ago, like I'm picking. Bastos and that's the here. kind of thing that I look for moving into a majors. Like that match in particular is what I was thinking about thinking picking Bastos because when people are able to almost get taken out, right? Yeah. She was in that triangle for a little while. Mm-hmm. It was mentally taxing, and it the second part of that match, it looked like nothing ever happened. Like yeah. it was not on her mind at all, and that's the kind of thing that people need to take into 
majors where you're going to have points where you're, you're losing gonna matches. You're going to have adversity, and then you're going to yeah. have to come back and, like, be And it's to, only like, a four-person bracket, but still two long matches with I mean, really good competitors. Talita Allen Carr. Yeah, and right? Fontes. Like, Patty Fontes. Patty yeah. It's, like, I, I think it's not probably a joke. see Bastos, depending on how the bracketing is, I think I would like to see a bastos Allen Carr final here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that I think they fought before. I forget how that went, but Allen Carr is always, like, kind of brings the dog out of people, and she pushes that pace so hard in the beginning. I think if Bastos can get caught, it would be in the beginning beginning of the match so stylistically i'm really interested in how that would play yeah i'm still picking bastos because she's just looked so good recently but this is a really fun bracket uh next onto the female featherweight bracket we got gabby mccomb we got liana perez we have tubby aliquin and taylor biagi um i I think we have a mccomb and aliquin final here i i think aliquin could take it um, but Gavin McComb has been looking better and better recently. I was going to pick McComb. Yeah. But just because I've seen her more recently. Yeah. Not because she's been more active necessarily, but I've seen more of her recently. And that's so. kind of why I've seen her more recently. And like Tubby, I think, has had some really tough matches recently. So I kind of want to lean McComb here. Any kind of thoughts, Emil? I was just looking up uh, Misa Bastos' record to see if they... Sorry. Yeah, I'm still on the Does old BJ one. Does Heroes have it up? <laughs> uh, no, I'm checking my notes. Okay. Dude, I wish they had. Sometimes BG Heroes doesn't have a lot of the women's brackets. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of the women's records, and it's like, uh, it's super frustrating it's as a guy up, that but... can't remember stuff <laughs> because like, oh, thanks BG Heroes, they have my back, and then I'm looking at like a women's record. I'm like, okay, she's four time oh. world champion, and I don't have a match list. Hmm, hmm. But it is from memory. I mean, I have ten events in my notes alone that we have my Sebastian. Yeah, we've been doing right the show for years. I would, yeah. I would hope so. Um, yeah, she's yeah, she's absurdly good. I kind of want to get. Yeah, I kind of want to leave McComb here in the featherweight division. My Sebastos does have a win over Patty Fontes uh, at Fight to Win 108. Okay, Great. by decision. Yeah. Sweet. We need to put this document somewhere where I can get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Emil can honestly search faster than I can, and he's better yeah. at this. So it's like, this is nice to have three people for major previews like this. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, got anything else for the featherweight division, Emil? Uh, no, I'm okay. good. Uh, moving on to the adult female light featherweight division, we got Luisa Montero, Nikki Sullivan, uh, Vanessa Sor- Vanessa, uh, Natalie Hibero, no. and... Um, this yeah. is gonna be crazy. I kind of want to lean Habero here. Yeah. Nikki uh, Sullivan could do it though. Definitely could do it. I just think Habero's looked so dominating and consistent. Um, yeah, yeah. Luis Montero is like dope too, though. Yeah. Again, all, like, yeah. all three of those women have a very straightforward path to victory. They all have pretty disparate games. Yeah. Like the uh, Sullivan always impresses me with like how long she is for lightweight. And how much that you can just like you can fold her in half like a chair, and it, you can't pass your guard. Yeah, because like the head, the legs can go behind the head. It's like cool. I'm gonna invert, and I'm back in the guard and enjoy all that work you did to almost pass my guard. You just didn't happen for nothing. Yeah, and yeah. that that was one always the thing that strikes me about Sullivan is just that she's just so frustratingly difficult to pass. Um, and in the IBJJF format, that makes um, a big difference. It makes a big big difference because the passing is such a big piece of the game. I think she's definitely gonna pull. But it would not surprise me to see her in a final here versus Montero or versus Habero. Uh, I still think I want to go Habero here, um, but I do not remember what I, go- I do not remember who has fought who, and I know that Habero just fought Montero, right? Yeah, this yeah. week and took a split decision. Yeah, like super close match. I would honestly love to see that as a final yeah, match. Yeah, rematch again. would be nice. That would be great under the IBJJF point scoring. I, I bet it would look different. It's also sure. in the gi, and the match this weekend was in no gi. So, but I, st- I still kind of want to lean Habero off that performance this week because she's looked, you know, she looked good. Yeah. Um, even though Montero had better positional work this weekend, so. I'm going to go with Habero too. Yeah. On to the, oh, that got screwy. On to the middleweight division for the women. We have Jessica Swanson. We have uh, Laura Halleck. Um, and we have Vanessa Griffin. We have eight women total, but those are the women that jump out, that uh, jump Ra- out at me. Raquel Canuto. Where? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, Raquel Canuto. There's, I don't know her middle name. See, I, I know her, <laughs> her maiden name, which is Pahalui, and now she has Canuto, and it just throws me off when I see her name because yeah. I'm not used to her seeing her name with her middle name not being Pahalui anymore, or her last name not being that anymore. Uh, who do you got, guys? That's tough. Yeah, this is a tough one. You know, I, I, I think I've seen a couple of matches from Raquel Canuto, but... Uh, her Invicta okay. fight was only a couple of weeks ago. I'm kind of curious to see. She didn't take a ton of damage in the fight, but coming from a full MMA camp, a professional yeah. fight, 
Um, and then going into a major, she had to pull out a third coast as a result of it. I'm kind of curious to see how she looks. I bet she's fully recovered, but it's still not, has and been also three the, weeks. The training for those two things is very, very different. different. Yeah. And yeah, this back is a, to back. This, that's, I mean, MMA is like, obviously no gi. Yes. <laughs> right. Like I said, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, so it, you know, that's, that's interesting and probably is a big factor in UFC yeah. one. It wasn't that's well, it could be <laughs> I mean, 25 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. You know, with the reaching into the well. I think UFC 2 might not have been as well. Yeah, you could fight in the gi for years and years yeah. and years. If you could fight in the gi, I, might, I would take an MMA fight. You could also fight with one single boxing glove. There, Art Jimerson. <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> We've gotten very off topic here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jessica Swanson's in this division. I still... I'm curious to see what Vanessa Griffin does. I don't think we've covered Vanessa Griffin, um, TLI, black belt, recent black belt. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. we saw her in the teams, uh, right? We saw her. Was she at Subversive? I think it was Subversive, yeah. Not this Subversive. I think the last Subversive. Yeah, I think. It it definitely was not this one. It was Subversive 2. I think she was on on Subversive 1 as well. I could be incorrect about that. Yeah. Um, but we've seen her on Fight to Win a bunch. She was fact, a I former think, brown belt champion at Fight to Win. I want to say one of the one of the events came down to the last match was her, right? Was it her versus... Um, I can't remember. Karana, not Karana, um, Gorilla. What's, oh, what's her name? Yeah. Tenth Planet Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Liz Carmouche. Yep. Maybe. Was, it, was it those two? I don't think I can't it was, remember. I don't think it was Griffin and Carmouche. I thought it was somebody else. But anyway. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to see what Griffin looks like in the... At Black Belt, uh, Canuto is again has a game that's super tough to beat. Laura Halleck, same thing. I do not have a good pick for this division. No, okay. do I. Yeah, I don't. On to the medium heavyweight division, we got Maria Meliasic, Emily Silva. We have Veda Toscano. We have Andressa Sintra, former uh, I think world champion or second place at the world. I think world champion. Yeah. Um, I should know that offhand, but that's one thing I always like completely mess up. Is like what what medal someone got at the Worlds, which you think I would know, but there's a lot of them. Um, I'm, I'm going Mel Yasek or Sintra here. Sintra for sure. I'm, yeah, I'm going to pick Sintra just because we've seen Sintra like, on third coast and she's been active and like yep. we've not seen as other women in this division. And she's looked very good active in majors. And she's looked very good. She you know, yeah. has the world credentialings and the medals. I'm going to go Sintra here mm-hmm. for medium heavy. On to the, me- on to the heavyweight division, we have Natalia de Jesus, uh, division of one. Okay. Division okay. can take that. Uh, on to the super heavyweight division. We have Talitha Noguera. We have Michelle Waitley. We have Jessica Flowers and Kendall Marie Riesling. I can... I, so, thanks, Sug. Pronounced Kendall's last name like four different ways, and now I do not have it correct <laughs> at all. I mean, Chael couldn't even pronounce Vinny's last name. Or Corian's last yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Chael makes us look good at names. Ch- Chael makes, makes, makes Zach me look, look good. good at names. <laughs> and right. Zach, we learned very quickly. I was like, all right, Zach knows Jiu-Jitsu very well. Does not know names. We're nope. going to read the names. This is a pretty good bracket. I mean, it's... Uh... We see Kendo primarily in Nogi. Yeah. I'm curious to see how she looks in the Gi. I do not want to bet against Flowers. Yeah. Yeah, because, I probably bet Flowers on this. But I, I'm i curious to see how if we see a Kendo versus Flowers, flowers and Kendall flowers match. have had a match in the past, haven't they? Probably, you know. I mean, super heavyweight division for women isn't isn't that deep. Isn't a hugely deep yeah. division. It's just you know, most people honestly, like most women have happened. fought each other before. And I, I feel like that match has happened, and I think I remember Flowers winning, but I could be way I, off. I do base. too, but I, I think it was a gi match, and for I don't think it was a fight to win. No, I, think I don't it think it was so. something else. I, I think, think it, it might have been another major. It might have been in a major. Yeah, but I don't. I do not remember when it, when yeah, it was. I'm right. on the keys over here. I'm checking. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see, because we've seen Kendall a ton in Nogi, and that's yeah. kind of her forte, but she does have a really, really good wrestling game um, that they talk about, you know, very frequent commentary. She's wrestled for her entire life. She has a judo background as well, yep. and we haven't seen her judo counters a lot. Me. Good, good. Uh, Nogi World's 2019. Who knew um, <laughs> Kendall Reesing took that one. Oh, okay. Do we have oh, a, actually, it was a close-up, so never mind. Oh, they're both. Oh, right. They're both Gracie Barra. They're both Gracie Barra. That's fucking bullshit. God damn it. Uh, I got so excited. I was like, how's this match going to go? The Flowers Bar game. And Mendo. Like, no, but it's going to be closeout. Okay. Um, Well, let's predict closeout. Yeah. I I think think somebody will get by Noguera. Um, Actually, everyone everyone makes the podium here. So it all depends on one match, basically. So GB's on the opposite side. Who matches up with Toledo Noguera? Who matches up with Michelle Whaley? Yeah. 
All right, on to the. That's it. Uh, we're in Masters That's now. That's it. Dude, this will be fun. I'm yeah. excited for this one. Some good. Uh, this is the there first. There are some straight up stacked divisions. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm so like now that we put the money on uh, not money on the line, but like the Keenan versus. I know. Felipe batch. I'm like, all right, now we have different picks for the people on the team. I'm very, very interested to see how that one goes. Yeah, we're, we're, we were pretty consistent through this one, but I'm sticking to my guns. Yeah, I like I like that we all have like different uh, different favorites in, in several divisions. Uh, we, have, yeah. we have guys' games that we like now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, that's... Well, it's, it's also... Majors are, majors are wonky sometimes, right? Oh, and every time. So there's a lot of super fights happening lately, and so we're building this like interpretation of how these matches go based on super fights and then majors are are different, different so different animal. you know it's it's hard to predict because we're we've seen not a big bracket in a eight months <laughs> right. i think euros it was euros. january january is the last major we saw uh-huh. it has been uh, math uh a while eight eight and a half months yeah. it's been eight and a half months since our last major it's crazy it's crazy and lots the happened world's since then been screw your shit yeah so uh yeah, I'm excited for this one. This one takes place October. Well, not to the time right now, actually. Uh, Last update. Takes place this next weekend. Yeah, next weekend. I- enjoy it. Friday uh, to Sunday, exciting stuff's on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Any kind of closing thoughts, Zach? Do you guys want to do the intro now? Or do an intro later, and then we'll we'll go back do. We already the, did the intro. Do the outro. outro? My bad. Sure. Do the outro. I can be part of the outro. Yeah. All right. So, which week look like? I'm getting my life back together after being at the beach for a week. Oh shit. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's why he's yeah, not well, in the preview section. Yeah, that's why section, I'm because like, I've been on the beach for a week. I will be. I do not <laughs> watched have watched zero jujitsu. Uh, so I can't remember really the time, contribute. Zach. Yeah, it's it was cool because it was cold and nobody was there, and I wasn't really going into the water. But so it was like an empty beach up in Delaware, and nice. rented a house up there. It was that's a wonderful awesome. week, but terrible coming back to finish. Reality. Getting yeah, reality. Getting back to work and dealing with all the nonsense that happened for a week. So mm-hmm. that's my week. I'm getting ready for my wisdom teeth to get yanked. So, Brutal. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how many you got? Uh, they're going to pull all four out. Yeah. You have four? It's They came in fine. Oh, it's just their opinion they have to clean. Wait, wait. You're getting your teeth pulled because they're annoying to clean? It's do beyond that. annoying. Okay. I mean, it's like they end up getting Sorry, cavities. You said shit. you said like, oh, they're annoying. I was like, wait, what? Like That is that is like Michael Jackson taking the drugs he took to go to sleep. I was like, well, there's a comedian who said basically it was like, yeah, taking that is like taking chemo because you don't want to cut your hair. He goes, that's the level that's on. That's what I thought you were like, I don't want to clean my teeth. I'm going to removed. No, no, no. no. Just they need to. They when need when to is that out. happening? Uh, right now it's scheduled for a week from Friday. So. So will you be on the show that coming week? Can you talk? How does that work? I have no fucking idea. Because when I got mine taken out, uh, I was three like. Three days, you might be fine. Depends on how well they do it. What's up, Zach? You free in a couple weeks? <laughs> for me, I was like, I can't make it in a while. I can't. I can't speak. Actually, no, I'm not. Okay, well, this will be fun. We'll figure out how to do this. I might be. We'll see. You're just gonna like dick me around. I appreciate it. Whatever. He's, he's, you got him for pans. <laughs> I do, which I'm very appreciative. It's awesome because Zach's a great analyst for majors. Um, and if, I mean, I'm, I've hunted more. I got more deer. I'm the I'm the, I'm the deer champion now. I'm, cool. deer, I'm huh? good at this. Yeah, they're delicious. Yeah, they're so they tasty. Are. It's the best meat. Uh, well, sometimes yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm a big fan. You of You can it. get a gross one once in a while. I have not got one of those. What's a gross deer? Uh, super gamey and tough, just yeah. like old, old uh, and angry. I don't have or, a problem yet. or if like you screwed up, getting cleaning it like right away, and then yeah. oh no, I'm, yeah, I get happens. everything and immediately like that day is like uh, immediately yeah. like within usually three hours. It's like it's like I don't done. hunt, but I've had gross deer before. Hmm. I'm going duck hunting apparently. Ducks but he's like, you want to hunt ducks? I was like, I do not know how to shotgun hunt. I fucking love duck. Duck is so delicious. Yeah, so we're doing that apparently. I gotta get up at 3 a.m., which I'm not uh, amped about. That's but not I'm ex- delicious. But I'm excited for it. It's gonna get a canoe and like boat somewhere. It feels like deliverance. Why do you have to get shot- a fucking man. Early. I don't know. I just show up for new experiences. I see ducks all over the place. Can you just blast? Them? I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't, I think, don't think you can just blast them, Emil. <laughs> even though this is Baltimore. So yeah, I gotta it is it. Baltimore. At some point on like. This week or next week, I get up at like 3 a.m. and then we're gonna go canoe into the wilderness somewhere with him and his buddy. And I feel well, like that sounds, sounds like you're terrible. doing it way too hard, man. I don't know, man. I'm just showing up for duck hunting. I see ducks a lot. <laughs> All I'm saying, I see ducks a lot. Yeah, Emil, Emil Santos for Like way more ducks than I want to see, honestly. Uh, fucking a. I see ducks a, a deuce lot. Deuce all over my car. Can you kill those ones? No, you're in the city. I cannot. Hmm. 
All right, so this is going off the rails. <laughs> As always in the show, I'm your host, Mange, and my co-host, Emil, and Zach. And we are the Grappling Rerun. We'll see you on the mat. Whenever that is, stay safe. If you like the show, please consider sharing it on Facebook with the folks at your gym. It's the best way that we grow the show, and we really appreciate it. You can reach out to us on email. We also have Instagram. We have Facebook. We have Twitter. We have Google+. Plus. Until that shuts down. We have a website. If you have an event you would like to have us cover, please let us know. If you have a name, like most people do, and you'd like to have us stop butchering it, let us know. Reach out to us. The show is also available on YouTube, Spotify, in addition to iTunes and every other podcast service. We very much appreciate your time, and thank you.